Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's live session to show you our solution to manage flu vaccinations at uh, pop-up clinics. Uh, we've got a new product to show you this afternoon, and I'm here with a few of my colleagues from EMIS to take any questions that you might have about this solution. Um, if you can pop questions into the chat from your team screen, that would be extremely helpful, and we'll give an opportunity to ask questions at the end. So what I'd like to do first of all is show you this as a solution end to end. There are two parts to this solution. Um, the solution itself is fairly lightweight in as much as you only require access to the internet at any pop up centres uh, to access the system. And there's a whole load of features that we'll, we'll show you as we go through. So essentially in a pop up clinic, what we're looking to do is give the patients or a triage nurse the opportunity to pre populate a lot of information about a patient before they actually sit down with a clinician to uh, receive a vaccination. And we're using a new app that we've developed called Preconsult to allow this. So if I just log into Preconsult on my screen, uh, I can show you how this works. So each user has a unique login and password. And this takes you through to the home page of Preconsult. So there's a number of different scenarios here that I'm going to describe. So the first scenario is that patients can scan a QR code that is available from the settings page. You have opportunity from this page to print off an A4 version of that smart code um, and display that. So if I show you what that looks like in the print preview, this can be printed. And when you scan this QR code on a smartphone, the, um, the screens of pre-consult will appear in the, in the smartphone for completion. So let me just close that down. And you'll see that the patient will be taken to this page here. So the QR code takes the patient to this page to complete the pre-consultation information in their smartphone. The other use scenario is that you could have a triage process in place at the pop-up center where this initial information was captured by either a, uh, a healthcare assistant or a triage nurse prior to passing the patient on to the clinician to administer the vaccination. So this goes through the, pro the process of entering date of birth, gender, family name, and given name. And there's now a validation via the personal demographic service. So the app will go away and check with PDS to find a match on the spine for this patient. So what we're doing here is guaranteeing as near as we can, right patient, right GP. So there's a process of validation to say, are these your details? And these are my, this is my information that's come in live from the spine. With it's brought in my GP practice information. So I know as far as the post event message or the GP notification is concerned, it's going to be directed to the right GP practice. And then there's our consent question. So consent, really important. We can't do anything without consent. So that's recorded by via a simple radio button. And the patient is then presented with a series of questions. So these are all the eligibility questions. Have you already received a complete dose of flu vaccine for this season? And of course, we need the answer for that to be no. If they say yes, then it's the end of the consultation as far as that patient is concerned. And these are the questions around, um, are they febrile? So do you currently have a raised temperature? Answer no, allows them to continue. Have you ever had an anaphylactic reaction to a previous vaccine? And then they're invited to select their eligibility group. So interestingly here, if the date of birth the patient puts in is over 65, then they're not presented with this um, eligibility group to choose from, they will automatically be put into the over 65 age group. 
Um, and this eligibility group has been updated to include the newly introduced eligibility reasons following the updated flu letter um, that was recently issued. So I'm going to select here that I have a chronic respiratory disease um, and then I'm allowed to continue um, their telephone number. Do they have an emergency contact uh, or any emergency contact information to record? and their relationship. And then we have the egg allergy question. So if they have egg allergy, there's a further question to say, is this reaction a severe reaction to eggs that's required hospitalization? And I'm gonna answer no to that. The final question in this triage uh, process is, do they have any other allergies? If they do, a free text field appears and allows them to enter. Um, I haven't got that allergy, but I'll put that in to show you what happens to the data when it's saved. So clicking next invites the patient to submit these answers. So remember, this is either being submitted from a smartphone device or this is submitted from a PC uh, by a, uh, a triager. Um, and clicking on send will send all of the information that's been recorded into the screen of outcomes for health. So what I'm going to do now is switch to the vaccinator screen and the way the system works is each clinician will have their own unique login, login, password, and six letter security word. When you log into Outcomes for Health, the only, um, the only uh, infrastructure you need in place is access to the internet. So this is all web-based, it's secure. All of the vaccine information that's been sent via pre-consult will appear on the practitioner services screen. So this is the information that I've just sent and I can see that it was sent at 1309 uh, via the pre-consult app. And if I click on that record to open it up, I'll see that all of the information that's been provided is pre-populated. And then there's conditional logic built into the system. So all that's left to do at the point of vaccination is record the vaccine that you're using. So you'll notice that the vaccine choice here is limited. Uh, this is because there was an egg allergy question and the patient reported they had egg allergy that hadn't required a hospitalization. So the vaccine list is only those with uh, a low egg of albumin content. Um, so selecting the vaccine then gives you the ability to enter the expiry date. Once the expiry date's been entered once, um, starting to make an entry in this field will bring up what you've entered before. Um, so uh, there's, there's quick entry after you've entered anything once and the same applies to batch number. So I'm going to put a, a batch number in here. Uh, then you just complete the information about the injection site and the vaccination route, was it intramuscular or subcutaneous? And that's the, the end of that uh, vaccination process. So there's a simple tick box here to say there's a discussion that uh, the patient's been informed about things that might happen post vaccination and ticking that as yes and saving this record will generate a post event message to be sent to the patient's GP. Um, so that's the process end to end. The only other thing that I haven't shown you is the presentation of a patient advice page that appears in a smartphone after they have pressed send. So after the patient has sent their information into Outcomes for Health, all of the advice for the patient is presented in a single page um, form that is uh, presented in a, in a more clear fashion than is shown in the services screen, uh, but it goes through um, what they might expect after immunization and how those side effects, if they do suffer with side effects, can be managed and when they should contact a clinician. 
So um, that's the process end to end. Um, I know now that my colleague Angela has got some information to give to you about what happens at the EMIS web end after the system sends a notification to the GP. And I'm just going to put up a, a slide and hand over to Angela to talk you through that and then we can take some questions. Hi everybody, um, it's short and sweet from me. So once the document comes into EMIS web, it comes in via mesh at the moment. Because of the PDS trace, it will automatically match to the patient's record and it goes into document management, which as you know, is in workflow manager uh, in the awaiting filing section. Um, it does match up to the patient, but at this point you would use a protocol or a template um, to enter the coded data required. Um, we are working on fire messaging, um, but unfortunately we don't think that will be ready for the early part of September. Um, so we, we're waiting for feedback from yourselves when you think these clinics may be popping up. 